Hi, and welcome to session on deducing day two operations complexity. My name is Omkar, and I'm the product lead for Architecture Framework. With me joining here is Rakesh, who is outbound product manager on Google Cloud's Ops Management. Today, we are going to talk about managing day two operations on Google Cloud, where we will cover architecture framework and highlight few key themes to optimize your deployments. Rakesh will walk you through our operations portfolio and will dive into few important topics along with new Google Cloud products and features that will help you efficiently manage day two operations. Now let's get started. I want to introduce you to the Google Cloud Architecture Framework, a set of canonical best practices to help you design, build, and operate a cloud environment that's secure, efficient, resilient, high-performing, and cost-effective. The Architecture Framework consists of six pillars, each focused on a specific topic, highlighting key areas critical to designing and operating your workloads. The system design pillar is the foundational pillar, which includes Google Cloud products, features, and design principles that are amplified across the other five pillars. Today, we will talk about day two operation, which focuses primarily on operation excellence pillar, but also covers few topic across reliability. There are three key themes to optimize your day two operations. One, designing resilient services which primarily revolves around ensuring you standardize your deployments and incorporate automation wherever possible. Two, understand tools available to you, especially how can you focus on improving operational excellence, then managing the tool itself. And three, how Google Cloud fully managed tools help improve your organizational agility and helps minimize operational overhead. Now let's quickly talk about designing resilient services. 2021 DORA research report indicates organizations that use robust tools and automation increase their agility and reliability by a significant factor. There are few key themes from architecture framework, specifically from the operation excellence and reliability that we expect you have or will incorporate in your deployment. Automate your deployments, whether it's managing code or deploying workloads. You should use various automation tools like CI CD, infrastructure as a code, etc., to minimize operator error. Such automation enables you to systematically write more code that will perform robust testing and validation for you. Launch gradually with the ability to roll back any changes so you keep your systems healthy and users happy. Use Google Cloud managed services like GKE Autopilot, Managed Instance Group load balancers, Cloud SQL, etc. that minimize your operational overhead. Design highly available system tracking SLIs and define SLOs which focus on keeping your users happy. Architecture framework documentation covers many other best practices and design principles that will help you optimize your deployments. Here is an example of a sample architecture that has incorporated various managed services like Cloud Armor, Google Cloud Load Balancer, Apigee, Managed Instance Group, GK Autopilot, and etc. Such architecture provides better scalability and reduces burden on your operations team. Your architecture design will vary based on your use case or business needs. Main point here is to showcase value of managed services in operationalizing your workloads. Let Google help you take care of maintaining availability of these services while you focus on improving your applications. Remember, optimization is a continuous ongoing exercise and a robust architecture is foundational key to achieving operational excellence. In next sections, we will talk more about highlighted Google Manage Operations tool. Over to you, Rakesh. Thanks, Omkar. As you embark on your operational journey, you should develop a good understanding of the complete portfolio of capabilities that help you get your job done. So that way you can plan your day-to-day -day tasks better and leverage the most relevant capabilities to derive the most value for your task. Let's get started and dive deeper. 
In the past, the portfolio of day two activities was very broad and often required a multitude of activities delivered through a wide variety of tools. However, as cloud platforms have evolved, day two activities, especially what is considered the operation space, have gotten cl clustered into two broad groups. First, many day two activities that were performed manually in the past have become automated and become integrated into the core cloud platform itself. These are native day two capabilities that are available with the compute, network, and storage services. For example, things like auto scaling, auto patching, auto healing, backups, runtime security postures are now natively integrated into the platform services and are highly automated. The second group of day two operations activities are related to aggregate observability across the entire platform, including GCP services and applications that users deploy on top of these services. These activities are performed either at a fleet level, service level, or at an application level. These observability capabilities include monitoring, logging, tracing, and auditing, and they help customers with understanding the health of their GCP deployments and troubleshooting problems. Now, last but not least is the top layer, as you can see in this picture, which provides different surfaces through which these capabilities can be accessed. This includes APIs, SDKs, the Google Console, and automation using tools like Terraform. Now, as you plan your day two activities, it is critical to understand the breadth and depth of these capabilities and come up with a strategy on how the organization will leverage these capabilities. Now, in this section, I'm going to talk about some of the best practices related to using these ops products that I just talked about and touch on some of the newer capabilities we have announced recently uh, that support these best practices. So as we all know that there are three pillars to observability data, namely metrics, logs, and traces. In many instances, customers deploy different collectors or agents for collecting these signals. Now that can be challenging from a collector administration point of view, as well as from a resource management point of view. Now our first best practice recommendation is to deploy unified collectors that can help collect metrics, logs, and traces. Now this is certainly possible with the open telemetry collector, as well as with the unified cloud ops agent offered by Google. Now, second, when it comes to logging, traditionally logs have been unstructured or semi-structured. Now, increasingly, logs have become more structured. Now, we recommend that users adopt structured logging. With unstructured logs, the primary mode of exploration tends to be very search-oriented. You can enforce some structure at query time, but that becomes quite onerous on the users. However, if you generate structured logs to begin with, then it becomes easier to apply additional techniques, including machine learning, analytics, AI, correlation, et cetera, to easily find patterns and outliers. Now, this comes in very handy in complex and highly distributed applications. Now, lastly, as applications become more complex, it becomes increasingly important to collect richer context from your signals, whether you collect that through labels and metrics or through fields and structured log events, this context helps you slice and dice the data and correlate it amongst the different signals. Now, it is increasingly critical to capture a unique identifier, like a trace ID, that spans a user request across all services and use that context in making troubleshooting much easier. Now, let me introduce a new capability that helps you take advantage of structured logs and all the rich context that you can capture from these logs. Until now, when you store logs in cloud logging, they were stored in a proprietary store and had a query language that enabled you to search through these logs. Now, with log analytics, we're integrating cloud logging with BigQuery and making BigQuery the native store for logs. Today, we're announcing the public preview for log analytics. This change enables users to now tackle a variety of new types of use cases. First, you can store all your log business data, security data, and operational log data in one single location and be able to scale that to petabyte levels. You do not need to copy the data log, log data from an operational store to another location when you want to integrate it with business data for analysis. For analyzing the log data itself for faster troubleshooting, you can use the power of SQL and BigQuery analytical functions. So in addition to searching through logs, you can do aggregations, group buys, joins, and other pivot operations on your log data to address the unknown unknown category of problems, which are increasingly common in distributed agile environments. Third, you can join the operational log data with other business data in a BigQuery lake or a warehouse and come up with real-time business insights 
and how they cross correlate with the log data. Last but not least, you can leverage the power of BQML and create machine learning based models for correlation, forecasting, and anomaly detection. The second group of best practices are related to building your observability footprint based on open standards. Now, over the past two decades, one of the big challenges for operators was to keep up with the data collection problem for metrics and logs. There were many proprietary solutions, and all of them were siloed and incomplete. Users spent more time figuring out how to ingest data rather than how to derive actionable insights and get their jobs done. Adopting open standards like OpenTelemetry can reduce the data collection pain and enable you to focus on using analytics for your operational use cases. In addition to open APIs and standards, there is a rich open source ecosystem available that enables you to adopt and deploy tools for a variety of different observability use cases. This includes tools like Prometheus, Elastic, Jaeger, et cetera. So we recommend that users use tools and services that are compatible with this open source ecosystem. These tools can be either do a do it yourself implementation or offered as compatible managed services. Now, lastly, we have often seen that tools offered in these OSS ecosystems work well as starter tools, but as your business grows and your services begin to grow, some of the OSS tools begin to have scaling problems. And customers also realize that managing and operating these observability services on your own becomes a challenge. In such cases, you can look for managed services that support these open APIs and open interfaces, but they're supported on the back end by proprietary implementations that address the scaling and globalization challenges of the open source implementations. Now, I want us to take a look at one such service that Google offers that supports open interfaces with a proprietary implementation. Google offers managed service for Prometheus. This is an example of a managed service that is compatible with open source interfaces of Prometheus, but is delivered not just by running the OSS Prometheus, but by replacing the data store and the query engine with a proprietary implementation. Let us look at what that means. We all know that Prometheus is great and very popular. However, we have seen that the open source implementation has three problems. A, it is hard to scale out as it was primarily designed to scale up. B, it is hard to make global, meaning if you have multiple instances of Prometheus, it is hard to run global queries across these instances. Lastly, once you have multiple instances, developers start spending more and more time managing Prometheus. Now, Google Managed Prometheus offers a managed service that addresses these challenges by supporting the APIs for collecting data and querying data using PromQL, but it stores and manages the data in Google's proprietary time series database called Monarch. Monarch is a highly scalable monitoring service. Now, when users want to switch their own instance to a managed service, they simply have to replace the OSS Prometheus upstream binary with a Google offered Prometheus binary. This distribution scrapes the data exactly like the OSS version, but it writes the data to the Google backend. Now, once that is done, users can then run PromQL compatible queries against Google's data store, and everything just continues to work as it was working before. Now, this solution has a very low friction for adoption, and all your existing dashboards and workflows just continue to work. Over to you, Omkar. Thank you, Rakesh. Let's look at some more tools from operations portfolio that Rakesh discussed. As your deployment grows, so does the networking complexity. It's valuable to understand how your network behaves, especially when things break and you're looking to fix issues with complex dependencies. Network Intelligence Center, or automated analytics and observability platform, deepens its ability to proactively monitor, visualize, and troubleshoot network health. Your op teams can now focus on a single place to view network deployments, understand traffic flows, quickly identify issues, and focus on improving network performance. Here are new features launching under Network Intelligence Center. Network Analyzer module, which automatically monitors environments for network misconfiguration and potential failures. Network visibility for customer has also been enhanced with both latency metric for Google Cloud to internet traffic in performance dashboard and new top talkers view in network topology so that you can quickly identify and monitor largest contributors to egress and optimize those deployment for performance or cost. When it comes to APIs, Apigee can help you minimize many operational problems and improve observability. 
We understand many customers now want to improve their deployment resiliency by incorporating API-driven strategy. Breaking your services into smaller manageable APIs lets you isolate incidents and improve agility of your DevOps team. Apigee API monitoring provides real-time insights into API performance that helps you ensure APIs are healthy and operational. Apigee Analytics allows you to view long-term trends so you can optimize and improve end-user experience. Anomaly Detection, a new feature, continually monitors API data and performs statistical analysis to distinguish true anomalies from random fluctuations in the data that helps you reduce mean time to detect API issues. Additionally, here's a quick highlight on new APG security features that help you, one, quickly address misconfigured APIs by creating profiles that are continuously monitored to provide you recommendations and take appropriate actions. Two, detect malicious bots within your API traffic to protect from abuse. Hope you see the value of using managed services that will supercharge your applications. Let's bring it all together. Rakesh mentioned that the portfolio of tools that span across various domains, and we discussed few of them today. Here are many other Google products and with capabilities to help you improve your operations in Google Cloud. We understand it can become an overhead in itself to view various tools individually and understand insights. Here comes Active Assist, a portfolio of intelligent tools that helps you optimize your cloud operations. You can see here that Active Assist runs through nearly all Google Cloud and provides you insight across various product in one single place, whether you are interested in security, cost, networking, compute, data, or operations, we've got intelligence for you. We hope you got a sneak preview of various Google Cloud tools to improve your data operations. Here is a link to architecture framework where you can discover many more such best practices. You can also connect with us via Google Cloud community to engage in AMA discussions, share insights, or learn from the community. Last but not the least, we would also like to thank many Googlers who helped bring this session together. Thank you so much for listening to our session.